So, I really obviously am incredibly proud of um, our second half effort. You know, we talk about playing for 40 minutes. And uh, that was kind of the first time, you know, honestly, other than Arkansas, where we got punched in the mouth to start. And, you know, we were able to kind of weather the storm with Khalid Moore on the on the bench with foul trouble in the first half. And we thought deeply about putting him back in. But, you know, our guys just kept fighting and hanging in there. And they would go up 11 and we'd keep fighting. And so we made the decision to kind of let them rest a little bit. And, um, and our guys were able to continue to fight back. I mean, Roslav Nowitzki gave us some fantastic minutes uh, certainly in that first half, and I thought Will Richardson and even Ramad Dean hitting a three, but I, you know, a couple key moments in the first half with some big stops when we went small, playing tough and physical, um, and, and then obviously being able to just calm it, calm the storm, cut it to seven at the first half, and then our horses went to work. Um, you know, obviously Dar Darius Cousinberry was tremendous offensively, but more importantly, I thought Abdus Simbala came in after having struggled in the first half. We challenged him at halftime. He didn't start, came out. He could have hung his head. He gave us incredible minutes. Uh, you know, Antrell Charlton, seven rebounds, seven assists, uh, only two turns, which, you know, obviously we've been talking a lot more about. And um, I'm just really proud of guys like Kyle Rose. I mean, hit big shots in the first half. And then, but his defense in the second half was just unbelievable. Uh, if we could play that type of defense, if we could turn it around and start learning how to play for 25, 30, 35 minutes, it could be really effective. Coach, uh, like you said in your opening statement, I mean, this is a really important performance for your team. So the first half, you guys were really trying to lock down uh, USC's Cam and Fens. I mean, how, how important was the front court tonight? Yeah, I mean, they were physical. You got to give credit to them. I mean, we played a little funky defense, right? And, we thought it was the perfect matchup to play the type of defense we want. And the kid Connie just came to play. And that really affected us early on because, you know, it's the type of defense where most fans don't understand, you know, it looks crazy that you're leaving some guys open, but you got to make them prove themselves because up to this point they really hadn't when you look at them statistically. But he came out, obviously transferred the game and really challenged us. So our bigs were kind of unsure of how to guard uh, at first, but they responded tremendously. Their toughness, their physicality at the rim, a couple of contested shots really in the second half were really fantastic. But I thought we rebounded the ball very, very, very good in the second half. We gave up six offensive rebounds in the first. And it led to 11 points, second chance points for them. And we went off a little bit at halftime, and our guys responded. I think we only gave up two in the second half. Um, so they, they, they had 11 second chance points at, at half and only ended up with 12 total, so huge effort from our base. Keith, when you get a guy like Khalid from Georgia Tech, do you, um, how much more of an impact can he have here than he had there? I mean, he has a bigger role here, right? Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, as far as an impact, I can't tell you because he played for an ACC tournament championship team. Right. So I do know he had a major impact from a leadership standpoint. He was a glue guy there. And he played his role as effectively as anybody on that pro in that program during his time there. But for us, when we were recruiting him, we talked about him coming home, him taking a much bigger role with our program, having to become more of a Batman, so to speak, or a Robin with Darius Quisenberry, however you want to look at it. Um, you know, and, and he accepted that challenge. Uh, that's what he wanted for his final year. He's a tremendous kid on and off the court. So he works as hard as anybody in our program. So for him to take a bigger role and to enjoy that, he is kind of a, a, a mismatch nightmare. And in the Atlantic 10 moving forward, that guy, that kind of dynamic um, small forward position is really, really effective in the Atlantic 10. Those guys, the teams that have those type of dynamic players on the wing or at that small forward position usually are at the top of the league. So we couldn't be more excited. He struggled in the beginning with fouls, and the way he played in the second half was, was fantastic. Do you notice with the portal now that there's more opportunities for coaches at your level to get a guy from a, a Power 5 school? Yeah, you know what? It's funny. The Atlantic 10 is the absolute ideal spot to be in. We are sandwiched between what people consider mid-major and Power 5. I mean, the Atlantic 10 is sixth, seventh best conference in the country every year, potentially fifth some years. So, um, you know, for us, you got high-major guys like 
we have a few of them on our program, right? So we got Abdul, who was at Penn State. We got Patrick Kelly, who was at Penn State. You got Khalid Moore, who was at Georgia Tech. So guys that want to come down just a level and maybe play a few more minutes and play a bigger role. And then you got some guys who are in the mid-major or low-major level that understand the statistics of going to the Power Five might not be what it looks like. So we are the perfect sandwich, right? We're right in the middle of the Power Five mid-major, so to speak. So I think it's an ideal spot. So when you're in the when you're looking at the portal, what how are you kind of determining who you want to target? Well, it all depends on who's available and what we need, right? We figured, right? Obviously, leaving Chuba Hohams was a big, big piece to what we did last year. Yeah. So we we searched for what we thought could be very similar, but a little bit more of a complete player, right? Khalid Moore is more diverse, has the ability to play on the perimeter as well as in the post. Maybe not a defensive juggernaut and shot blocker or rebounder like. Chuba, which we're trying to get him to be, yeah. but he brings a little bit of everything, right? So um, it, it's a year by year basis, right? So, you know, it, it's what's available and then what's our need. Is, last one, sorry. Is this, was this something that maybe coaches weren't doing at this level five or 10 years ago and now it's more common because of the portal? Or well, yeah. That change? Yeah, that's, that's obviously more common everywhere in the country. That's why you see the parity across the country. You see teams losing because especially in the beginning of the year, you got a bunch of new guys. I mean, we just played, who we played? New Hampshire. They had 10 new guys, three Division One transfers, yeah. right? So it just, teams are getting older, but it's taken a little time for them to gel. So, um, and anybody at this point, along with NIL at the same time, has the ability to build a roster every spring and summer that's going to be competitive when they might not have been a year ago. So it's just, uh, it's definitely a heck of a lot different, not just five years ago, it's different from a year or two years ago, yeah. especially with the portal now and NIL in addition. I feel like we have an opportunity here at Fordham with New York City in our backyard. You know, we have as good of an opportunity as ever before. Coach, what do you think of the atmosphere tonight, and how do you think that helped you guys when you guys made that second half of the run? Yeah, I mean, it's remarkable that everybody talks about the facilities here at Fordham. It's the oldest on-campus arena in the country. It's a treasure. So why add? Like, we pack it. It's loud as heck. I mean, it's half full, and it's incredibly loud. You get some fans in here like tonight, and, and still not where we would like it. We'd like it sold out, people hanging from the rafters, but it does affect them. And our jobs as coaches and players is to wear them down over the course of 40 minutes. They didn't miss a free throw. I think they might have missed one in the first. They missed a few in the second because our fan base is right there in the second half, yelling and screaming, and it wears you out a little bit. I mean, it's hard for coaches to to get hurt by their players on the court. So, um, you know, I, I thought the fans were fantastic, especially with the home football game. Uh, you know, you could see some some uh, some some turnover. People came from the football game. That's a long day. They they toughed it out and came into Rose Hill. So, obviously, the more folks we have in this building, the more of an advantage it is for us. And on the defensive side of things, Carter and Anderson are two leading scorers. You held them to four and eight points, respectively. And you think back to you know the UNH and got like Kyrie Brown. You guys did a great job. Yeah. What's it about the best offensive players of both teams that you guys are able to contain? Well, that's what our whole game plan is about, right? That's the funky defense we started in the first 20 minutes. It was all to take care, of, take them four and, and zero away, Carter and, and, and Anderson away. That was the whole design of the defense. However, usually, you know, if you look at the percentages, they don't have their role players step up the way that Akani did tonight. Kid, kid came to play, and a couple of their other guys made some threes who we didn't expect to make, and you got to give them credit. So they made, we made an adjustment just to, to switch one through five in the second half, and that can only happen when you got kids like Abdu and, and Rostick who can switch and keep guys in front of them. So they're obviously a big piece to what we did, and we just used our length and just picked them up. The goal, we knew they, they the, both those kids got to play 36, 38 minutes a game for them. So our, our job from the moment we tipped was to pick them up 94 feet, mix some guys on Anderson specifically, and and try to wear him down, and I think we did that. Take two more. Uh, Coach, uh, Pat Kelly was not dressed for the second game. And yeah. Ramad uh, came down hard late in the game. Didn't really. He went off to the side. Didn't yeah. Really came back. Any update on those two? I I, I have no idea about Ramad Dean at the moment. I mean, it's, he's obviously he got nicked up. He got hit pretty good. But you know, I'll, I'll get with our trainer and figure that out. As far as Patrick Kelly, he's day to day. Had concussion symptoms from practice just last week, but he's day to day. So, um, you know, we 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 had mentioned that the other day. So.
you know, uh, hopefully we'll see. I believe he's getting tested again tomorrow, and he could be back Monday. But you know, uh, there's there's no rush with that, that that sort of thing. So if he can go, he can go. If he can't, is what it is. Plus one top, uh, coach uh, Luke Yaklis, the opposing head coach, another incredible pedigree, just like you. Uh, yeah. The shock of smart John Beeline tree. What's it like to go up against another coach who's kind of fighting their way as the first time, a very young head coach in the sport? And what sort of competitive nature does it bring out in someone like you? Yeah, well, he and I, I was the associate coach at Penn State for eight of my 10 years there, and he was with John Beeline for a while. And during those periods of time where he was with John Beeline, we had some of our best teams at Penn State. So we went at it constantly. We had tons of battles against them, win and loses against them. And I thought, obviously, he's an unbelievable defensive coach. That's what he's known for, but really talented offensively. He's a great guy. I, I appreciate him coming to play in this event. It's obviously a big moment for us hosting uh, an event after who we believe is one of the, the, the biggest legends in all of basketball and Tom Kachowski certainly here in New York City basketball so for him to want to come here and take part in that we appreciate that but I think he's a fantastic coach so you know really I never really look at the other coach or other team that's not what it's about it's about trying to you know again get us one percent better every single day and that's the only thing we try to focus on but I, I respect him as much as anybody thanks a lot coach thanks coach hey. when you hit that three to tie it up there 51 put your three fingers up what, what's kind of going through your mind there um, you know, I kind of just wanted to get the energy on. Uh, I know we went on a little run. Uh, so I was just trying to get the energy in the building. You know, everybody get back on defense, just keep sure. it going. Khalid, uh, what was a big shift for you? Uh, you know, f- like you had zero points in the, fr- in the first half and 14 in the second. What was, what was the main change for you at halftime? Um, I mean, I got into foul trouble in the first half, so I wasn't able to, uh, you know, really play as much as I wanted to. So, um, I just wanted to come up, come out with the energy. So I just came out playing hard, you know. That just kind of started it. And speaking of foul trouble, you guys got yourselves uh, in, into the double bonus with a double bonus advantage, you know, before the under twelve timeout. You know, for either of you, I mean, how did how did that intensity, you know, opening up in the second half defensively really help you guys? Uh, I feel like it just that's our identity. Uh, that's what we base our, our program off of. Uh, defense, and I feel like we didn't do that as much in the first half as we did the second. You see the results in the second half. Um, but I think that's that's what our identity is, and we got back to that second half. But when you transfer from Georgia Tech to here, do you notice a different level of play, or do you feel you're able to kind of excel here because you played at that level? Um, honestly, I feel like basketball is basketball. You know, I feel like there's competition no matter what level. I feel like uh, people are going to play hard no matter what. So just bringing the experience over from there to here, I feel like that definitely helped me just bring a spark to this team. So, Do you notice, I mean, it seems like there are a bunch of guys who kind of are transferring, I guess, from the highest level to – whatever, you know, mid-major, like yeah. kid Aaron Estrada at Hofstra and other kids. Do you notice more guys doing that now? Or? Um, yeah, I feel like uh, you see it a lot now in the game, especially with the, the COVID year. You see a lot of older guys, uh, a lot of transfers coming in, so it's a lot of new stuff going on. Why do you think, uh, I mean, what's the advantage for you of like, coming to a place like this? Um, I feel like people are just trying to find, you know, really a system that fits their play more, so I feel like it's a lot of people out there just trying to find the perfect system for them. Darius, how do you feel he's kind of helped the team? Uh, tremendous. Like, he's, he can play the really the one through five. He doesn't play the one for us, but he can. Yeah. Uh, the way he handles the ball, defends one through five. Uh, he's a huge piece for us and a huge mismatch out there on the court. And I, and I love playing with him. He's a great teammate, great person, uh, all around just a, a great person. Is there anything about his game that tells you, hey, this guy came from Georgia Tech and was in the ACC? Or um, Honestly, I feel like he plays – I feel like he plays completely different than he did at Georgia Tech. Uh, I feel like his role is bigger here. Uh, he has more freedom here. Um, and, and we love for him to have more freedom because you see he can go off of 14 points just like that. Yeah. Uh, so, so we need him to keep doing that and, and for him to keep being confident and, and uh, aggressive on offense end. You feel you have a, a bigger role? Definitely, yeah. You want more for the guys? Uh, um, yeah, I mean, you know, you got the UNH 11 for 26 and 3 tonight. You guys went 11 for 23. What's just been – the key for you guys to stay consistent with your whole shooting? Um, just working on it every day in practice. Knowing we get up shots, being confident in those shots. Uh, when we shoot it, just believe it's going in. That's the biggest piece, especially with shooting, just having that confidence. And then just driving the space and, and kicking the guys, and then guys just shooting open shots when they're open. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.